G'day guys, how are we going? Look, I just thought I'd come up here and show you this section of beach that I mentioned the other day when we drove through here. This beach does get shut off when the high tide comes in, when you're camping up here at Sandy Cape. So you do need to be prepared for this, for the remoteness when you do come and camp up here. Because if something's to go wrong and you need to get out, well, when the high tide's in, you just can't get out. Now this will happen twice a day and the tide will be up for around sort of five to six hours. And this section of beach is totally and utterly blocked off. It's one of the few places that I certainly know of around Australia where you are completely and utterly controlled by Mother Nature. And that's what I think makes this place so special. But just remember, just take this into account when you come up here. Even when you're heading up here, you've got to take the tides into account because even when on low tide, it's still only a narrow section of beach. So take those tides into account, get up here and enjoy beautiful Sandy Cape. So when Captain Cook first sighted Fraser Island, way back in May of 1770, he actually named the island the Great Sandy Peninsula in the mistaken belief that it was connected to the mainland. And then back in 1799, when Matthew Flinders came through here, he explored parts of Harvey Bay and he actually discovered that the peninsula was actually an island. Well, Fraser Island, it's the largest sand island in the world and it's made up of huge sparkling white sand dunes that are ever changing and evolving after 700,000 years. And the length of Fraser Island, it's around about 123 kilometres long and it's around about 22 kilometres wide. And it was inscribed on the World Heritage List way back in 1992 and it covers a massive area of around about 1,840 square kilometres. Well, Fraser Island, how did it get its name? Well, way back in 1836, Captain James Fraser was travelling through here on the brig, the Stirling Castle. He ended up finding himself getting wrecked on Swain's Reef, which is somewhere north here of Fraser Island. Now, survivors of that wreck, they jumped in lifeboats, end up drifting south, and end up finding themselves marooned right here on Fraser Island. Now, survivors of that, being Eliza Fraser, the wife of Captain Fraser, she ended up surviving and ended up finding herself back on the mainland. So subsequently, the island was named after her, Fraser Island. Just have a look at this dingo. Now we're just sitting under our awnings, out of the rain, and this dingo's just started to roll into our camp. Now we weren't about to get up and disrupt his day and shoo him off and that sort of thing, so we just let him come in and just do his thing. But what's really important here, all of our food and our scraps and that sort of thing, rubbish, all well and truly securely locked away inside our four-wheel drives. And it is really important when you go out to Fraser Island that you do just that. Put all your food away and your rubbish and make it all secure, locked away inside your four-wheel drive. And then you don't give these guys a reason why to hang around your camp. So he's just come in, have a bit of a look, then off he's gone for the rest of his day. Well, good day guys. Well, we're just packing up here. We've spent a couple of days here up at Sandy Cape. This is Phoenix, an absolutely magnificent place. It's been a good couple of days, isn't it, mate? It's been fantastic. Absolutely We've sensational. A little bit of rain, but uh, yeah. it all adds to the experience. Absolutely been fantastic. So you really got to come up here if you're going to get up to Fraser Island. Come and check this place out because it's absolutely beautiful. But here we are now, day four. Uh, we're going to pack up from here, and then we're going to head down and check out the lighthouse. Gonna shoot down the beach as far as we can go. Uh, we'll park our vehicles down there and then we're going to take the walking track up to uh, Sandy Cape Lighthouse. Well worth checking that out. Magnificent views at the top. And we'll come back down, jump in the full drives, back up the beach, round the tip of Sandy Cape again, shoot down the beach here. Then we'll jump on this inland track at Orchid Beach and we'll go across the west side of the island and we'll check out with Thumber Creek. Uh, apparently it's pretty nice over there, so I've not been over that side, uh, so I'm pretty keen to get over there and have a look. Then we're going to come back across the same track and we're going to find a spot somewhere on the beach here to camp tonight. So, so there you go guys, that's our plan for today. And uh, so Dave, we'll just, might as well finish packing up, mate. And unfortunately, we've got to get out of here and leave this magnificent piece of paradise. It's just a stunning place. So yeah, we're gonna pack up and we'll go down and check out the lighthouse. So let's get this day underway. That's it. Let's go. All right, oh, just backing out of this fantastic spot up here at Sandy Cape. So been up here for a couple of days. Beautiful spot. Now, time to go down and check out the Sandy Cape Lighthouse. So just after leaving camp back down there now, we're heading down the down the beach here towards the lighthouse. 
Um, yeah, we're just cruising along here, we're only doing sort of 50, 60 k an hour. Sand's still a little bit soft, but the tide's just started to run probably about two hours ago. We've got all day, got plenty of time to drive the beaches. And look, this is just absolutely pristine driving down here. It is absolutely fantastic. Make sure you come up to Sandy Cape, highly recommend it. Where we've got to pull up down here. Now this is as far as you can go down the beach down here. Um, you'll see on the map there with the red lines on the beach, that's the areas you're not allowed to drive you down those sections of beach. So from Sandy Cape, this is as far down the beach you can go to the lighthouse. We're going to park the VIP four drives here and sit them on the beach and we'll walk up the track to the lighthouse. The Sandy Cape Lighthouse is located at the northernmost point of Fraser Island. It operated between 1870 and 1994. The establishment of the lighthouse was the first European settlement on Fraser Island. Right, eh? Back down from the beach up there, from the walk up there to Sandy Cape Lighthouse. Absolutely worth going up. The views from up there are fantastic and uh, plenty of history related to that old lighthouse. Well worth the walk up. Now we're going to get on back up the uh, back up the beach again, head up around Sandy Cape and uh, make our way across to probably around with Thumba. We're going to go across the west side, check out over there. Maybe have some lunch over that side I reckon. So another cracking day ahead. roll out again around the tip of Sandy Cape. A few birds just sitting there on the beach. There's just now another little tip here while you're driving these beaches. The closer you can drive to the, where the waterline is, is where you're going to find the firmest sand. You're going to get the best run. I like driving on concrete up here at the moment. It's absolutely beautiful. This is where we leave the beach here. Uh, I'm going to take this inland track across to Wathumba Creek and uh, we're going to check it out over there. I reckon we'll get over there just in time for a bit of lunch. Got a bit of traffic we'll let come through first and then we'll continue on. So we're going to continue on straight out here, straight out here if you turn left there which we'll drop in there a bit later on. But that goes into the little town of Orchid Beach. So we'll drop in there maybe when we come back. We're just uh, rolling into a Thumber Creek, little camp area here. That hasn't taken us long, it's only taken us oh, probably about 20, 25 minutes to get from where we left the beach on the other side. Uh, where we're going to come across here now, we're going to have a bit of lunch, and then we're going to head back and going to camp in Zone 8 tonight, which is just one camp back from uh, where we camped last night at Sandy Cape. Very nice. Great spot for lunch. Alright, oh, well that's for lunch I've had there. We're now going to head back across the beach and um, back through that mainland track again and uh, yeah, find a spot to camp somewhere over on the surf beach again tonight. Nice spot here, 
but we're gonna head back across. Oh, I think we came through here last time too, didn't we? Um, little town here where people can get a few basic supplies and things. Yeah, that's it. You can um, fill up with your fuel, you can uh, get the water from the tap outside, you can get ice cream, alcohol, whatever you need. Yeah, right, eh? that's always handy because this would probably be your uh, last stop when heading to the Cape, wouldn't it, for all these sort of supplies? Yeah, this is where you've got to start thinking about what you're going to need and how long you're going to be there to whether you're going to get small or whether you want to have a quick buy before you go north. Here and, um, yeah, it'd be good to get rid of some of this rubbish, it'd be good. We've got a gate, we've got to go through, so I'll open the gate, you can go through. Right, oh, no worries. So the reason why for these gates and fences around these, it's really to keep the dingoes out. Is that right, Ake? That's correct, purely so they don't go in there and feed. This is where you can come, guys. Come up here, put your rubbish in these bins up here. Fully secure environment, so dingoes can't get in here. So it's really important that you know we we don't leave any food scraps around our camp and that sort of thing during the day and during the night. Make sure you lock them away inside your car because these little dingoes they'll get into it, feeding them, and that's the last thing we want to be doing is interfering with their their natural environment here. So keep your rubbish and that inside your car and all your food, whatever's got there. Keep it all locked away, nice and secure. And then when you got some rubbish, come into the tip up here but make sure you shut this gate when you go back out again. Because they're all secure bins here, so the dingoes can't get in for a start, and they can't get into these bins either. So this is a great idea, good way to get rid of some of your rubbish. Well, there we go. Well, that gets rid of the rubbish we've had, which is a good thing. And I noticed when we drove through, Dave actually went back and he's shut that main gate. It's probably a good idea, you just never know when you come to the tip. Could be a few dingoes just hanging around outside. And the last thing you want to do is allow them to come in here. So shut that gate when you come through and uh, open it and close it when you go back out again and that way keeps the dingoes out of here and they can only go and feed on all their natural stuff that they've got around Fraser Island We're just going to drop an Orchid Beach now, going to have a bit of a look there and um, maybe grab a drink or something before we head back down the main beach and find somewhere to camp for the night. And just remember again on these inland tracks it's only 30k an hour maximum speed limit which is plenty fast enough along these inland tracks. So it's going to take your time, just a lot of these tracks they're shared tracks, two way tracks so you never know a vehicle might be coming the other way. Okay, we're just rolling back into Orchid Beach again. And, uh, just grab something to eat, maybe grab a drink up here and See what Orchid Beach is all about. Right, I've just rolled out of Orchid Beach here now. Um, just noticed on the bows is there fuel, especially diesel, 235 a litre. Now, um, you know, if you need it, you need it. So uh, it's a long way from uh, getting back, especially to Rainbow Beach from here. So you've got to judge your fuel pretty right when you come out on Fraser Island, but $2.35 a litre there. So we're going to head back down now on the main beach find our spot, a spot to camp in uh, Zone 8 we're in tonight 